So basically, how the Lions work. So obviously, the Six Nations prior to the, the Lions tour, um, the Lions um, go around each of the countries and they get all the players fitted for, for the kit and suits and the shoes and everything. Um, and it was, it was, I'll never forget this day. And uh, Gats had, called, he'd had a meeting in the morning. He said, right, just make sure, lads, you get fitted for uh, the Lions kit. Uh, they didn't all day, so make sure you stick to your time slot. And then um, a couple of days later, then he, he says in another meeting, can't believe it, boys. Can't believe it. He was like, all you were boys, they've just come back. Your size is a lot bigger than the English. And you think, oh, really? So you'd be, well, you'd be like sitting on your chair, thinking, oh, all right, here we go. <laughs> go. Going back to how I knew, so literally, literally obviously, the Six Nations had passed. And um, I was back playing for the Scarlets, and my phone rang. It was Rob Owley. And he said, oh, look, um, just let you know, it's between you and uh, another hooker um, for the potentially for the Lions. I was like, right, you said just make sure you concentrate on the game today, do everything that you normally do, your set piece and have a good one. And so that was it, hang up. And then I'll never forget the rest of the journey, you're just thinking, Christ, look, potentially be in the Lions year. And then the same same as any squads announced for the Lions, it's, it's live TV. And uh, we were in the, the Scarlet's team room at the time. and. Um, so you start I forget alphabetical order and then I, I'm right at the end. So uh, I was the last name out. The phone was just constant message after message, phone call after phone call. Yeah. And uh, oh, proudest moment of my career, you know, being being named in the, in the Lions, and then obviously the the hard work started then when um, we had to we had to get ourselves ready for South Africa. Mm. We, we, look, we knew it was going to be tough, especially with the, the team that South Africa had, South Africa had at the time. Um, you know, the likes of Blackies, uh, Victor Matfield, Umpina, De Villiers, Banner, you know, just yeah. world-class rugby players. And you know, they, they don't take any messing whatsoever. Like, And we knew going into the tour, we were having um, feedback that literally the midweek games is all you're going to try and do is beat you up uh, get you ready for that, mm. that, that first test and that's what the South Africa wanted to do to have an all Welsh front row I've been so used to playing with obviously Geth and, and Adam um, and it was it was, a, it was a nice moment and uh, just an unfortunate it only lasted one game because yeah. they both ended up in Austria <laughs> after the you know, second test and I know I like I, I was wound with uh, Phil Vickery um, after that first test, and he, he was he was gutted. He was like, "I'm I'm done. I'm not playing again." And I think he had a couple of friends out there, which literally he's coming back to the room late the night and been on a few beers. And you know, I think he he really been frustrated with what happened, and I think everyone was pointing at him for the, for the loss. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was tough because you are in the spotlight, a big game like that. And in fairness, let's let's be honest, you, you had a tough and torrid time by the beast. But the third test, then he starts um, with myself, and um, I never forget this, this the conversation I had with him. He said, "I wish, I wish I had you in the, in the first test." For someone like that to say say that in terms of his experience and the type of player he has, for, for me, he is you know, he speaks volumes to. Um, to me, of how much I was appreciated, and um, in fairness, he put those wrongs right in the last test, and and he enjoyed it. Then he came, yeah. you know, he's coming back home from that tour, happier than he would have been if he didn't play that last test. Right, like Vickery's quite old school player, isn't he? You know, he's been yeah. around a long time. He's sort of come to the end of his uh, career that 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 2009 tour, um, and there's there's a, a clip on the. The 2009 series documentary where we're in the chain room just before the game and he's, he's head but then Andrew Sheridan. Sheridan and then he, he grabs me again and I'm like <laughs> why does that do it just react but uh, yeah well, he was up for that game there's, there's no doubt about it that um, he's going to have a positive impact because like you say you're so frustrated with what happened that first test obviously he misses out on the the second test but then he's got that opportunity to like you say 
for the wrongs right and um in fairness he was uh he was more than up for that that challenge i think <laughs> it was a good way to finish uh the 2009 series really really wasn't it because as much as um it would have been nice for that third test to be the decider um it's just a case for us that we say put a bit of pride and passion back into the, the jersey and get our result um because you know, in fairness as well people Say about the Lions to where uh, the fans make it as well. They were they were great, man. They they go in the thousands, like and um, no matter if you're Scottish, or you're so English, they, they make an effort, and um, it's like a family affair.